Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to see about congenital anomalies of cornea and globe. First, let us discuss about microcornea. First, let us see about normal values. The normal neonatal corneal diameter is 10 mm and the normal adult corneal diameter is 12 mm which is reached by 2 years of age. Microcornea is a rare autosomal dominant condition. It can be unilateral or bilateral. Microcornea is defined as horizontal corneal diameter of less than or equal to 10 mm over 2 years of age or less than 9 mm in newborn. This picture shows a case of microcornea. In case of microcornea, the cornea is steep on keratometry. It can be associated with hypermetropia and shallow anterior chamber, but other dimensions are normal. The ocular associations of microcornea include glaucoma, congenital cataract, and leukoma. This picture shows a case of microcornea with leukoma. Other ocular associations include persistent fetal vasculature, coloboma, optic nerve hypoplasia, aniridia, and nanophthalmos. There are various systemic associations of microcornea as well. It can be associated with refractive error and amblyopia, which should be managed appropriately. Now, let us discuss about microphthalmos. It is a condition in which the entire eye is small with axial length at least two standard deviations below the mean for age. There are two types of microphthalmos. The first one is simple or pure microphthalmos, which is also known as nanophthalmos, and the second one is complex microphthalmos. In case of simple microphthalmos, it refers to an eye that is structurally normal apart from a short length. This picture shows simple microphthalmos of left eye. Now let us discuss about complex microphthalmos. In this case, the eye is small with other features of dysgenesis. The other features of dysgenesis can be in the form of coloboma or orbital cyst. This picture shows bilateral complex microphthalmos with bilateral iris coloboma. This picture shows right microphthalmos with orbital cyst. Complex microphthalmos can be unilateral or bilateral and when unilateral, the abnormalities may be present in fellow eye. The vision is variably affected in case of complex microphthalmos and it is a sporadic condition. 50% of cases of complex microphthalmos may be associated with systemic abnormalities and the potential environmental causes include fetal alcohol syndrome and intrauterine infections. Now let us discuss about nanophthalmos. In nanophthalmos, the entire eye is small with an axial length of less than 20 mm. It is usually bilateral. The ocular associations of nanophthalmos include angle closure glaucoma. This is because the lens is large relative to the size of the eye. Other ocular associations include hypermetropia, ametropia, amblyopia, and strabismus. Now let us discuss the management of a case of nanophthalmos. In nanophthalmos, in childhood, management of refractive error and amblyopia are critical. Surgery for glaucoma in nanophthalmos is particularly hazardous and it can result in aqueous misdirection and choroidal effusion. It is important to remember the mnemonic small eye big trouble. Lens extraction is technically challenging in nanophthalmos but has the advantage of deepening the anterior chamber and reducing the refractive error if a suitable high power lens implant is inserted. Now let us discuss about anophthalmos. It refers to complete absence of any visible globe structure. This picture shows bilateral simple anophthalmos. Sometimes there can be microphthalmic remnant or cyst. This picture shows right anophthalmos with cyst. Anophthalmos can be associated with absence of extraocular muscles, a short conjunctival sac and microblepharon. The causative factors of anophthalmos are similar to causative factors of microphthalmos. Now let us discuss about megalocornea. It is a rare bilateral non-progressive condition. It is inherited as X-linked recessive. So 90% of affected individuals are males. It is defined as adult horizontal corneal diameter of greater than or equal to 13 mm with a very deep anterior chamber. Remember, the normal adult horizontal corneal diameter is 12 mm. It is associated with high myopia and astigmatism but normal corrected visual acuity. This picture shows a case of megalocornea. It is associated with lens subluxation due to zonal stretching. It can also be associated with pigment dispersion syndrome and various other systemic associations. Now let us discuss about sclerocornea. It is a very rare bilateral condition. 
it is associated with cornea plana the inheritance of sclerocornea is usually sporadic however one mild form of sclerocornea can be inherited as autosomal dominant and another more severe form can be inherited as autosomal recessive now let us discuss the features of sclerocornea there will be peripheral corneal opacification there will be no visible border between sclera and cornea as you can see in this picture this gives the appearance of apparently reduced corneal diameter in mild to moderate disease occasionally in severe cases the entire cornea is involved as you can see in this picture now let us discuss about cornea plana it is an extremely rare bilateral condition in cornea plana the cornea is flatter than normal so the radius of curvature is larger this picture shows a case of cornea plana this will lead to corresponding reduction in refractive power eventually leading to high hypermetropia there are two forms of cornea plana the first form is cornea plana 1 which is abbreviated as cna1 this is milder than cornea plana 2 cornea plana is also associated with other ocular abnormalities now let us discuss about keratectasia it is a very rare unilateral condition it is thought to be the result of intrauterine keratitis and perforation in keratectasia there is protuberance between eyelids of a severely opacified and vascularized cornea as you can see in this picture keratectasia is associated with raised intraocular pressure now let us discuss about posterior keratoconus it is a sporadic condition in posterior keratoconus there is unilateral non progressive increase in curvature of posterior corneal surface the anterior surface is normal and visual acuity is relatively unimpaired this is because of the similar refractive indices of cornea and acosemur there are two types of posterior keratoconus the first one is generalized in which there is involvement of entire posterior corneal surface and the second one is localized posterior keratoconus in which there is paracentral or central posterior indentation as you can see in this picture thank you